Hello, children of the night. Welcome back to the channel. First things first, remember kids, don't do drugs. Secondly, today's video, we're going to talk about why Swift UI is so marvelous with its preview and why it's so spectacular. Okay, enough of that, guy. In today's video, I want to go over how we can utilize the Swift UI preview panel to help us develop our standard UI kit applications. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you. Uh, I'm gonna show you my Xcode right now. And I have a couple of bullet points at the very top here. So what exactly can you do with the Swift preview panel on the right side? Well, one interesting thing is that you can actually show multiple previews open at the very same time. So for example, uh, on the right here, we have a preview using the iPhone X device. So it looks like a standard notch up here. And let's say you want to view it using a non-notch device. It doesn't have the notch, and this looks like an iPhone 8 or an iPhone 7. So that's how the second preview looks like. And then you can also preview a single view controller that looks kind of like this with Craig F. Uh, Craig Federighi, I think his name is. And so moving on here, and the other thing that's really advantageous for the Swift preview is that you can modify your standard UI view controller code and then changes on the right side will show up automatically. So what exactly do I mean? Well, let me show you what I wanna do here. Uh, for example, this application really represents the Instagram Stories app. At the very top, we have these circles that can scroll right and left. So clicking on the play button here, hopefully it will start running. And what you can do is you can start uh, dragging this right and left and left and right. So for example, let's say I want to change this circle to be a lot larger, right? And uh, the easiest way of doing that is to go inside of your view controller code. So you see I have some cells here. There is a size for item at, which is this over here. Uh, currently, it is set to 110 by 150, so standard size for item at method. I'm going to take the 110 and bring it up to 150. You can see the code automatically reflects the circle size on the right side. Uh, really good stuff. You can obviously modify this to be whatever you want. If you change it to something that's not supported, you'll get some strange effects on the right there. All right, let me bring this back down to 110. You can see if you don't want to develop a Swift UI application, you can still utilize the preview by putting a UI view controller in the preview. This way you can avoid the many, 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 many times of running an application inside of your simulator. Will definitely save you a lot of time here. Okay, so that being said, let me move back to the bullet point here. Uh, something else that you might notice is if you want to just see one single view controller inside of your app, let's say maybe it's five or six levels down inside of the UI, you can actually preview just that view controller by itself. So what exactly do I mean? If I click into Steve Jobs right here, this is the full screen controller for a particular story. Am I right? Uh, this screen right here, I don't always want to click into it to show that screen. So at the very bottom of this preview panel on the right here, I've created a separate preview that just shows the full screen. Now, what else is interesting about this full screen is that I can modify the contents through dependency injection. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the preview area, which is right over here. And I can modify the actual story inside of this full screen integrated controller. Let's say it's him. I believe that's the image I want to use here. I'm going to say maybe it's Cook here. So Cook is the actual image. You can see the changes in this single controller are automatically previewed inside of the window. And let's say Gandhi is the other image here. And maybe we will bring back Craig, just like so. Again, if you're not using Swift UI, you can still utilize the preview to help yourselves uh, speed up the development process. This really avoids just running the simulator so many frequent times. Okay, so lastly, uh, I want to show you that um, previews are on the right side. They're being rendered using something called a UI view controller presentable protocol. And what exactly is this protocol and you know what is it responsible for doing? 
Well, right now, I want to show you how to create a standard UI kit view controller, and then we'll use it so that we can actually see it on the right side. So this is pretty easy. I'm going to go back down to the preview code right here. And at the very top, this right here is the sample preview. You can see it reads it from this actual class here. So sample preview. And the first thing I'll do is I want to create a class that is going to be called a red controller. And this is a standard UI view controller. Instead of here, I'm going to say view it load uh, super view it load, and then view dot background dot background equals dot red. All right. So standard red background red controller, and in order to see it on this right side panel right here, uh, we need to create a very simple view. And what we'll do is I'm going to say this red. Uh, sample view it doesn't really matter what you call it as long as you conform to the view protocol and next I'm going to provide the body which is what the protocol asks you to do and make sure to use some view this why don't we make it a little interesting with a list create a text and we'll say ABC copy this a couple of times here now this is just a sample view that you create inside of Swift UI before you can actually see it on the right side panel, we need to have a preview as well. So you see a preview down here. Uh, why don't we create a struct, a struct, and we'll call it the red sample preview. And this guy, you want to also conform to the preview provider protocol. Down here, you have to say static. So static var previews is the variable that you have to provide. Uh, make sure to use some view there and just return some kind of red sample view. Okay, that's all the code that you need. I'm going to use uh, command option and P to execute the preview run. It's just going to check along and automatically right here, you'll get your preview to show up. And now you can modify any of these rows and immediately those changes will be reflected on the right side. So that's how you get a preview going. And now the question is, with our red controller here, how exactly do we incorporate it inside of this area? Well, all you want to do is you want to create something that is going to represent your controller inside of Swift UI. That's kind of how you should think about it. Uh, I'm going to create a struct and I'm going to call this the red integrated controller. Integrated controller, that's just the uh, terminology that Apple uses, so I'm going to follow that. And this struct is going to conform to UI view controller representable. Uh, reading the docs here, it just says that it's a view that represents a UI kit view controller. Use that. Uh, the confusing thing about the UI view controller is you have to overwrite two protocol functions. Uh, the first one, I think I want to just use update UI view controller. It updates the presented view controller uh, to the latest configuration. You don't really need to know what this does. You can provide a blank implementation and this right here, I think you might want to change it to the controller that you want to render out, which is going to be this red controller. So let's take this and just paste it here. Okay, this function looks good now. The second function you need to uh, implement here is the one that actually makes the view controller. So create a view controller instance to present, double click on that, and this guy is going to require you to return some kind of red controller. So why don't we just return the actual red controller instance from above, and it's going to create this red guy, and this is the controller that it creates. Now, finally, for the actual preview down here, so you see our preview, right? It's showing this list, which is just saying text uh, three times, and down here, instead of seeing this list, you can now just create the red integrated controller view, and this is just a standard view component, so you just create it like that, with these two parentheses. And then on the right side, you can hit resume or command option P. And instead of seeing that list now, you'll get the red controller to show up. So this is how easy it is to integrate your standard UI kit controllers. Uh, if you want to fix the safe area, you can ignore the safe area with dot all and everything should be fine. Let's just wait for the edges to be ignored. And there we go. So the nice thing about these previews right here is that you can actually modify these previews to give it a specific size if you wanted to see it being rendered differently. For example, if you give this guy a preview layout like that and say dot init or not init, but fixed with a width of let's say 300 by 400. 
And once you do that, the preview is going to adjust its size to whatever options you give it over here. So this is a 300 by 400 rectangle. Um, down below, you can do the same thing with this preview. And it'll look a little bit interesting. So let's see. This right here is a sample view previews, which is this guy. I can give this the same preview layout code. So instead of typing it out, I'm going to paste it here. You'll see instead of this large device, it's going to be rendered out a lot smaller now. Uh, one small, maybe it's a bug, but you can click on the play, but it's going to bring it back to the original device size, which I'm not sure if it's a bug, but that's what it does. All right, everyone, that's going to conclude the lesson for today. Now, as you can see, the Swift UI preview window has a lot of different options that we can take advantage of, regardless of us developing Swift UI applications or just traditional UI kit view controllers. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video.